of this. The objectives of this are provide quality data to the USGS and remember, by default, the form will set, will set it up so you will go, you will send directly to the USGS. Train your operators and have fun. Um, the default email address is live. So if you do want to run a test with only local exercise, you need to replace the default to field with a local email. And that can be a call sign, that can be a regular email, but everybody needs to do that. Um, for reporting an exercise or real event, leave the default as is and please CC your local exercise coordinator. Please cluster your responses. This gives us the most realistic view of an event. So like a real earthquake, the reporting should simulate the reporting that you felt and when you felt it. So plus minus an hour. And again, you can adjust that over time, but I would recommend if you do an exercise to have kind of people cluster around the same time. And that's the way it'll arrive on the other side too. That makes it easier to identify what the event will be. And please feel free to use the comments to indicate which group is sending the data and how, and any other comments. Um, USGS was very surprised at first when they saw that people added comments and a couple of these, uh, a couple of these observations turned out to be extremely useful. So please feel free to send these comments. A couple of tips for exercise success based on our experience, be specific. Relay specific times and locations to your players and testers. You can add a magnitude if you wish. If you have a group of people that have experienced earthquakes before, maybe tell them it was like this and this earthquake and give them a town. Like we have a earthquake around, I don't know, Pasadena or Pomona. And that gives everybody a sense of, well, I'm this far away, I should feel it like that. Um, real events, use the USGS official information from the website. And here's the website and you will get that information as well. It, you will have access again to this whole slide deck. And just remember USGS times are always in UTC, but the reporting both on the web form and the WinLink form is in local times. So you need to make that adjustment. Please make it easy for your players to do this. Um, so we talked about cluster, talked about the official versus a local test, about changing the uh, email address, keep records. Um, simple setup information for your exercise, your group, your ARRL section, your coordinator, time, date, location, and participants. And we even created a worksheet for you um, to try this out. You don't have to send anything back to us, but if you do want to say, send something to k6li at awrl.net, just take a picture, a photo of your um, event information of that form, if you'd like, and send that back. And that gives us a sense of who did what kind of exercise. And please consider using the WinLink ICS 309 auto generator to log messages. That's been extremely helpful in all our exercises to be able to just create a whole ICS and see all the messages that came in. And this is part why it's so important to CC your exercise coordinator because he or she can create this log and then see who participated and when the messages came in. Extremely helpful. And we talked about taking a photo of your worksheet. And above all, have fun. Make sure your players have fun. This is what this is all about. And let's face it, when we have those big Cascadia earthquakes or that volcano that um, has an earthquake in, in uh, Hawaii or here, the San Andreas in Southern California or the many earthquakes all throughout the Western states um, and Puerto Rico, then keep in mind, it probably won't be fun, but at least you'll know how to do it because you had fun in, uh, leading up to it. There's no more perfect in NCOM. I keep telling that to our people. Things either work or they're learning opportunities. And this is what this is supposed to be. And we do encourage everybody to coach, support, and encourage your players, testers, participants. That's what amateur radio is. A couple of exercise suggestions here. This is a um, WinLink event worksheet that we set up. And you can just fill it out, your group, your ARRL section, um, who your event coordinator is, an event name. If it's a Exercise, come up with a snazzy name, it always helps, uh, makes it more fun. And then of course, 
tick the box. Is it a real event or is it an exercise event? Um, the date and the time of the event is really important. You don't have to worry about when you send it because Winlink will take, a care, uh, will take care of um, informing you. And of course, the event location, what's the nearest city so you have an idea. And you, if you want to, you can even estimate a magnitude and give people a sense, well, we want you to work off of that. And if they go then in and research what that implies, more power to them. And a list of participants, that helps a whole lot. Um, we already talked about all the parts and you know the location should be where you, where you think the epicenter should be located. And again, you can do two, three, four if you want to and practice this and have them at different times. In fact, if you have sections or areas that are adjacent and you have good relationships with the areas adjacent, why not have a large earthquake and have coordinate an exercise where you have multiple sections um, send in reports for the same event? So that's an idea. Just an example here, what it would look like in a real world example, real event example, you tick the real event box, but you'd still set, um, fill it out the same, Aries LAX Northeast, section LAX, Jeff, uh, Jeff W2 JCL would be our coordinator, we call it the Ridgecrest earthquake. And this is um, one, the one year anniversary of the Ridgecrest earthquakes is actually July 4th and 6th. So we will probably do an exercise along those lines and report actual data and then have a list of participants. I find it easier. Here's an example of an exercise event. Um, in this case, I called it Ridgecrest Earthquake and we just did a June 11th, 2020. So the time is totally made up as is the date. And just keep that in mind. Winling, did you feel it hands-on training? Let's get to that. A couple of things and we'll just walk you through this real quick. Download the latest Did You Feel It form zip. And where can you find that? At this location. And Tron, if you wouldn't mind popping that into the chat. This is where it's located. This is a stable URL. So if there are any updates to it, we will do that. Probably we're not going to mess with it until the end of this beta testing cycle. There are two files in there, a text file and HTML. Please extract both of them to this folder. And it's the same folder for all of you as long as you have the default installation in Winlink Express. And we'll make sure that you have that information as well in the chat. You can find this little tip if you want to do a shortcut. And then it's as simple as the regular forms that you all know and, and love. You start a new message, you select a temple, template, and you go to global templates, because that's where it's located. And you do the USGS, did you feel it draft dot text. You click on that. And this is what this looks like. I have a bunch of other um, forms in there, but essentially you double click on that. And this will open the did you feel it. As I said, the first, Two fields are mandatory. You have to fill those out if you want to submit. If you don't, then you click the submit. It'll remind you gently that you need to um, do that. So select in the first, in the top here, and we're just going over the fields that are important. Exercise or real event. Let me turn on the, let me turn on the pointer here. John, can you see this? We can see it just fine. Okay. You pick exercised or real event. If it is a real event, you click on real event and then you report it just like a real event. Then next, you, did you feel it? If you felt it, you click yes. If you did not feel it and it was in your area, please click no and still um, fill out this next part and then submit. Again, this helps establish boundaries. The time of the earthquake. So you could fill it out a day after, you'd have to change the time and the date, and I'll show you live what that looks like in a little bit. But you can change all of this. This is auto-populated for you to make it convenient. Then the address, please fill in here. And the time here, if it's a real event, you put in the actual time of the event when you felt it, or when you think you felt it. And if it's an exercise, the coordinator, your coordinator will assign you a time. So make sure that 
everybody in the exercise has a similar time here. A couple of minutes, more or less, won't make a big difference. But if you're off by a couple of days, then it's a different event. Please enter your address um, as much as you want to, but also enter the latitude and longitude. They actually use both the address and the lat long to verify your location. And latitude and longitude, we will have a little bonus session afterwards. You're welcome to stick around for that. And we'll show you how to find it easily with your smartphone right now, if you have it on you, or if you have a GPS dongle and you're using Winlink Express with that, we'll show you how that, how that is done. And of course, fill out the rest of the form. If you felt it, you fill out the rest of the form and I'll show you how to do that um, live in a moment. And any additional comments in this place, you could put in Aries LAX, um, Winlink HF VARA, 40 meters. That would be great information to send to your exercise coordinator. And then down here, you click on submit and you're done. Just like all the other forms, super easy. This is what it then outputs. I just filled this out here. This was an exercise, just like we talked about. Up here in the two field, the did you feel it reports automated test at Gmail, that's something the USGS set up. And that auto populates, keep that in mind. If you want to do just a trial run locally, you would have to change this to a different address for everybody who submits that. And then CC your, in this case, I will put in your um, exercise coordinator, not ours. And then it's the same as always. Um, your call sign is automatically logged down here please use your base call, not a tactical call for this. That makes life a whole lot easier, especially if the USGS decides to look it up um, and go into the ULS database. And there you go.